Hello. Today, now, we are going to tie the Predator. This is a fly I came up with many years ago, 1994, this book came out, and there's the original Predator imitator dragonfly nymph. I'm not going to go into a lot of stuff about how this fly started or how you fish it. I'm just going to tell you for now that it's evolved into a super, an insanely popular fly for bluegills and other panfishes. I use it for trout in lakes uh, by trolling it. You can fish it on floating lines, sinking lines. It's usually fished floating for panfish and for largemouth bass. I've used it for smallmouth bass and yellow perch and all kinds of fishes. But really, it's become a fly for panfishes, especially bluegills. And this is a predator. Right now, I mostly tie it in these two colors, uh, this color and the other color which is tan and chartreuse. And the way I that I tie it now, it no longer, to me, it resembles a dragonfly. It's, a it's an attractor fly, but attractor flies work great sometimes. Let's tie it. We begin with our hook in the vise, which is the Daiichi 1550. I'm going to start with a small one because, as I said, it's mostly a panfish bluegill fly. So I'll start with a size 10. Size Eight or six can get you big bluegills, big bluegills, or bass. Size 10 is more a bluegill fly. An alternate to this hook is the Daiichi, I'm sorry, the Tiemco uh, 900 BL. I've used that successfully. What I like about the Daiichi is that it's a strong wire hook. If I hook a three pound bass instead of a bluegill, <laughs> I'll probably have a shot at landing him. But it also has a short shank and a wide gape. You need that, otherwise the fly and the foam in the fly tends to fill up the fly. I'm going to use a fairly heavy thread. Now this is 6 aught. It could just as easily be 3 aught. I like unithread. But I like a heavy thread in a thick fly because why not? You've got a bulky fly, no problem with using a thick thread, and a thick thread is stronger than a thin thread. Start my thread about mid-shank somewhere. Now I'll take four strands of Crystal Flash, and this is in pearl. Bind that on using the pinch. Pull it double the front end back. Hold those back and bind down them tightly because this is your foundation for the foam. I'm going to go a little bit down the bend but not very much. If you take a look at this, the bend actually, the, where the hook starts to bend from the straight shank, starts about there. And I went down, what? 32nd of an inch, not very far. But I like to go down just a little bit. Okay, then I go back up, and now that slick shank is covered with tight th turns of thread, and the thread has texture to grip the foam. So that's a good thing to do. And I'll cut these off. Not to length, but just cut them there for now. Uh, then I need my foam. This is fly tying foam. Uh, sometimes it's called fly foam. This is two millimeter thick, and I'm going to measure that against the hook. Now, not against, remember, we're, we're part way down the bend here, so I'm going to go up to the shank and measure this against the shank. The shank starts right behind the eye, goes back to where the bend, bend begins, and do about two-thirds or three-quarters of the, of the shank. And then I'll just mark that with my scissors. Maybe I'll make it a little thicker than that. I call this, I don't know if it's grammatically accurate, but <laughs> I call this a blunt point. That's how I like to cut this. It's not even, doesn't matter. Get my thread up to the middle of the shank. And then at the very tip of the foam, I bind it. And the heavy thread, again, 3 out would do this even better, but will help to compress the foam quickly, cover the foam quickly, because thick thread covers faster than thin thread. And then I go all the way back, to where the tail comes out, that part of the tail. Now just get this bound on. Now remember when you're working with foam, 
Again, I wrote a book on this, so I studied it. Foam is, if you buy real fly tying foam instead of foam from a craft, craft store or someplace like that, real fly tying foam is quite tough, but it has its limits. And if you pull that thread really tight, you weaken or cut the foam. So I want to pull the thread firm, but not truly tight. I want to bear down on it, but not to the maximum by any means. Then the foam is going to last. So I've got that all bound down, and now we're going to put in the tails. The second set of tails, rather. And I've got, uh, you can use yellow. Yellow looks great on, with the tan. Uh, you can use, here's white. But this is a, a finer, fairly fine rubber strand. And it's through the eye of a needle. And that's going to make my tails. Now, I've done this enough, and you can do it too. If you tie enough of these, you get to where you can just use one needle once through to make the tails, to make both tails, and they'll come out even. So I'm going to angle them. Let me show you what I've got here. They're an it's angling out. See that? It's not in line with the shank. And I just push it through. Get this back out of the way. And then I duplicate that on the other side. Now, if your tails keep coming out goofy so that this one is just right and the other one doesn't match it, you can always cut this off Take the needle, go through the other side the same way from the outside. The same way I did the first tail. But I've done this enough. Now, after saying that, of course, I'll mess it up. But I think I've done this enough that I can get the angles right without doing all that. We'll see. Of course, the fact that I'm doing it on camera cuts the odds of my success dramatically. But I could be doing this at a sportsman show or a fly tying event, and then the odds would also go down that I would get this right. So I'll cut that off. See, I left a little... Oh, come on. These are really good scissors. I'm just not operating them very well. There we go. Now let's see how I did. Not bad. Not bad. This one is not the same angle because it's got a bend to it, I think, is part of the problem. But we'll play with that a little bit. See if we can fix that. Yep, there we go. That's about as close as you need to get. Now, this loop, just bind the loop. If you don't bind the end of the, uh, of the rubber strand, if you don't bind that loop, these tails are going to slip around. One's going to be long, one's going to be short. Eventually they'll fall out. So I bind the loop. That's more binding than it needed. But nothing wrong with that. Now, some kind of flashy material, fine mylar material like this. This is Arizona Diamond Dub in crystal, but you could use something else in pearl. Doesn't really matter. This dubs very well though. Real fine stuff. And so I'm going to spin that onto the thread. You can use dubbing wax if you like, or you can keep a little dish of water nearby to dip your fingers in. It dubs quite well though, but it'll fight me a little bit as I go. Just typical mylar attitude. Go all the way back, and then, whoops, it's getting a little thick. I just want to make a sparkly underbody to drive those bluegills mad. That's all I want to do here. And cover all the foam, and a little more. About right, and now my thread should be right at, it's okay if you go a little too far with the dubbing, but I want it right about in the middle of the shank. Shank starts about there, pretty darn close. So let's try that, I'll pull this forward. Now, again, a uh, little information on tying with foam. If I pulled this foam forward tightly, first of all, the body might get a little too skinny, Second problem is the foam is already stretched. It's already weakened. So if I pull it forward and bind it, and I pull it forward tightly and stretch it, again, the fly isn't going to last as long. Plus, I want that foam filling out the fly. I want this fly to float. So I'm going to pull the foam forward and pull on it just a little bit. Just lightly. Just pull it forward, stretch it a little bit. The thread bindings are going to stretch it a little more. And so I'm just going forward with it, with thread bindings. Plenty of bindings, and again, not tight, just firm. And now the fly is starting to shape up. Okay, I'm going to turn the 
vise so you can see what I'm doing. I like to thin this part a little bit. This is the front. Oops. <laughs> that didn't go all right. Catch this corner and uh, I'll show you. I won't even cut it off. I'll just leave that on there so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not taking a lot off, but I, f I like the eyes to show. And if I don't trim this off, the eyes may not show. So there we go. I've trimmed it. You can see how much. Obvious. And I'll just get rid of that. Okay. You could mess around and try to bind this forward. But you shouldn't. Because that would be really a, a inefficient, messy way to do it. Much better to do this. Bring your thread forward. Right up to right real close to the eye. The hook's eye. Now take the foam tab down and bind it. Much faster than trying to bind it forward is just to, to uh, wind the thread forward and then pull the tab down and bind it. So we can always check. It's always good to check in tying flies. I could go forward a little more if I wanted to and I think I want to, but not too much. You get greedy here and you won't be able to get to the eye of the hook. All right, twist that into place if you need to. Now, where are we? That's not bad. But I'm going to, well, let's see. Next, I'll put on the eyes. Different companies are going to, the, the size that they call a medium is going to vary. But this, these happen to be uh, Wapsi eyes. So if you want to use exactly the same eye, use the Wapsi size medium. These are the black plastic barbell eyes. And real close up here, not exactly right up against the foam, but just barely back from it, I'm going to hold the eyes on top, bind them not too tightly. Here, I'll turn this so you can see better. And then just turn them out and bind them the other way. Now I can start cranking on the thread and really bind those eyes on so they stick. Now before you get them on too tightly, as you can see, these are a little off sides. And I haven't got them on tightly enough yet that I can't move them. So there, I've just adjusted them. I pushed them over that way a little by pulling on this eye. Bind those. That should do it. Go back to the front of the body. I might go back a couple of turns. I'm trying to get to the center of the straight shank. And that looks good. Okay, pull this over. This this tab in front. I don't know where that came from. Shouldn't be there. I don't like it. I mean, do the fish care? No, absolutely not. But I'm not a fish. Okay, pull that back. Make sure it's on top and then it's centered. That looks centered to me. And then I'm going to bind it right. These bindings are right up against the front of the body. There's a reason for that. I'm not binding ahead of the body, I'm binding right there, right there, right up against the front of the body. I'll show you why in a moment. Okay, again, not tight turns, but definitely firm turns. Get that on there. Now I'm going to make a circular cut. I'm going to hold this and then cut as I make an arc over the top. And that makes a curve cut. Just a little tab here. That's all I want. Now there's your eyes. You can see the eyes back in front there. They're sticking out. Everything's going pretty well. This is. I'm not going to complain about this one. When I tie in public, if a fly goes this well, I am happy. So now here's where your thread's coming out. Between the head and the collar. Bring it back between the collar and the body. Right up against the body. And now I'm going to take one of these, this is rubber strand, medium, and double that over the thread. Bring that up and bind it on the side. Now, because the thread is right up against the body, the body is going to push this leg straight out or close to it. Same on the other side. The body is going to really help me here. So I'm going to use, I find that if I want the legs to match, what I have to do is bind both sets of legs, both pairs of legs, with one turn of thread. So I've got this one turn that's holding those legs, and I've got the vice turn so you can see what I'm doing, and I'm going to bring the second pair of legs, the second strand, 
down to the body, a little high because thread torque is going to twist it, and then pull that tight. And so you can see the legs are really sticking out to the sides already. That's what you want. The reason you want this is because if the legs start about like that, then as you fish the fly, they have a tendency to straighten, and pretty soon they're going to be almost like that. They're not going to look like legs anymore. But if they start out well out to the sides, then there's some room there for them to uh, flatten out a little bit. So I'm just making some turns. I, you know, one turn of thread isn't going to do it with rubber strands, rubber strand legs. If you use one turn of rubber strand to do the, oh, that one's really anxious. It got, it's got a little bend in it and it's flipping forward, but see if I, fine, whatever. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting enough turns because if I have just one turn holding the rubber strand, that if that turn loosens, everything's going to get messed up. So I'm taking these turns, see, right between the rear legs and the front legs, and now that, they should be on there to stay. <laughs> this one is driving me nuts. It's not not nice, it's not appropriate. Oh, now it's going another direction. Fine, whatever. Okay, pull them all back. We're getting really close to the end. And now, if you wanted to get these legs back out of the way, you could use uh, hackle pliers. You could clamp them on there and then put them on your, sort of set them so they stay on your materials clip. Or you could, uh, some people will take some uh, lead substitute wire and wrap it around the body and the legs and then unwrap it when they're done. Or you can just work your whip finish in in front of the legs, which isn't that difficult. There's about a triple whip finish. We're getting really close here. Now, cut your thread. Underneath the head here, I'm going to coat that with finish, just with a, a regular head cement, but it looks cool. Again, fish don't care, but it looks cool to humans. If you use a glossy uh, coating, it could be the Loon. Loon has a, what's that called, Carol? Uh, Clear coat. Sounds good. Anyway, Loon, Loon Products makes a real glossy, thick coat that, would look, that looks good on there. I've used it. Um, or you could use epoxy glue. Now, the legs, the tails. How, how, uh, how, well, let's start with these. Where do you cut them? I cut these about a gap. Some people call it a gape. In other words, the opening of the hook, the whole opening from the tip of the, from the very point up to the actual shank of the hook, that's about how long I make these. Maybe a little shorter than I've got them. Now, how long do you cut the tails? Take the tail, take one tail, and hook it in the hook. That's what's going to happen when you're fishing. I'll show you here. That is going to happen when you're fishing, and if the tails are too long, they'll get caught, and you'll keep having to pop them out. So I hook one in there on purpose. Don't pull it tight, but just let it go as it naturally goes, and then cut that and then cut the other tail about that length and you've got your tails figured out. Same thing with the legs. Go the rear leg, let it get caught in there and then cut a little past the bend and that leg is very unlikely to get caught in the hook. Cut the other one the same length, that's not quite the same length. Now, this gets interesting. The front legs are angling forward and they're a little further forward so when you put those in and cut them, what you're going to find is that they come out longer, see what I mean, that's quite a bit longer, than the rear legs. Kind of the opposite of nature, but then the, what, what's natural about this? Nothing I see. I mean, this is, you've got this crazy sparkling material here and these barber pole legs. Not nature. And that looks about right. Boy, you know, I've, I've never had the legs stick so, <laughs> angle so aggressively out to the sides. That's weird. So I'll just, uh, I'll do what would happen if I fished this thing for about 10 minutes. That is, I'll just pinch the legs on the sides and, gee, well, that's fine. That's not a problem. There, that's about how they usually come out. And, uh, Again, the front legs are longer than the back legs. And this, again, if you, if you think there's too much of this stuff under here, you can trim it. But this, this fly has really evolved. And when, 
when we do, hope, hope soon, a video on how to fish it, because there are a lot of ways to fish it for a lot of species, uh, we will talk about why it's designed the way it is, because it's changed a lot since 1994. Now, look at these two predators. This is a size 10, and this is a size 6. They're both pudgy. How, when you use the same thickness of foam, this 2 millimeter foam, how do you make these two sizes the same pudginess? Because, you know, it's going to be a lot harder on this bigger hook since the foam remains the same even though the hook gets bigger in relation to the foam. And in fact, it does get bigger. How do you do that? You tie differently. The little flies up to size 8. Eight's the cutoff. You can go either way. The small hooks, I tie thin style, which is what I just showed you. The big hooks, size 8 and up, I tie fat style. And I'm going to show you the difference right now, because before we tied thin style, now I'm going to tie one fat style. So oh, I'm going to show you the difference, the difference says, between tying thin style and fat style. I've already got the fly up to this point, and everything's the same except for the differences that I'm about to show you. First, when you measure the body, now remember before, so I go back to the bend, the actual hook bend, and up here to the front of the shank, before, I went up about two-thirds, three-quarters. This time, I'm going to go all the way up and right there, give it a poke. Now, that's the full length of the shank. That's part of making it fat style. So I'll cut that. Full length of the shank. Cut it to a blunt point as before. Bind it, but look, here's a big difference. Um, I'm going to wind the thread back in spirals over the foam. That keeps the foam nice and thick in the center, which is going to help fill out the body and also add some additional buoyancy. Now, where's my... Okay. You can always lift up the foam and see where it is you want to stop. And go a little further, and there we go. I'm not going to bind this loop up the body. I'm just going to bind it at the end, which is all that it needs. Just make some turns over the end of that uh, rubber strand. Just right back there. Don't need to go forward. You can trim off the end of the rubber strand if you want, or you can leave it. Doesn't matter. I'll trim it off. There. Now, when I go forward, that's when I dub. So I'm going to spin on uh, last time I used the Arizona stuff, and now I'm using Ice Dub in Caddis Green. Spin that on the thread. Take a turn or so, and then spiral forward. And that's adding the sparkle without binding down too much of the foam. I'm, not, I'm trying not to really bind down this foam core, the core of the body. Trim the legs, trim the tails, trim the tail, put the head cement on under here, done. I've caught some grand trout on this, some big large mouths, small mouths, the list goes on. Bluegills, of course, tons of bluegills. It's a good fly. It's a very versatile fly. Fish it deep, fish around the top. That's how it's tied. Thank you very much. Thank you.